Hello, and welcome to Sutton Brain Hub's series of interactive videos on pain physiology. This series of videos will focus purely on pain physiology and will assume prior knowledge of spinal tracts and other anatomical structures. Video 1 Pain and Nociception. In this video, we will cover the following objectives we will define pain, we will aim to understand different types of pain. We will define nociception, learn some key noxious stimuli, and understand peripheral pain sensation and further sensitization mechanisms. To begin with, let's start with some definitions. The International Association for the Study of Pain defines pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. However, due to it being such a complex and subjective phenomenon, defining pain has been a huge challenge. In medical diagnosis, pain is regarded as a symptom of an underlying condition. Pain is a universal experience, but there are many different types of pain and many ways of expressing the sensation. The way pain is described scientifically can be considered either temporally or physiologically. So in terms of temporal pain, you can have acute pain or short-term pain versus chronic pain or long-term pain. Physiologically, pain can be further subdivided. It can be considered either peripheral or central or inflammatory or neuropathic as in physical damage compared to nervous damage, or somatic versus visceral, where somatic pain is sharp and well localized, and visceral pain is more achy and poorly localized. The sensation of pain, and particularly acute somatic pain, is due to nociception. Nociception is defined as the process of noxious transmission. Nociceptors have a minimum threshold of stimulation that must be reached before an action potential is generated. However, nociception is not an all or nothing phenomenon. Increased and more frequent stimulation causes greater nociception, thus greater pain sensation, compared to less frequent stimulation, as you can see in the graphs before you. The red line on the graphs denotes the minimum point of stimulation that's required to generate an action potential. The sensation of pain, and particularly acute pain, is due to this nociception. Nociception is performed by nociceptors. A nociceptor is a free nerve ending at the end of a sensory neuron. They respond to potentially harmful or damaging stimuli i.e. noxious stimuli. They're found in the skin, muscle, bone, tendon, ligaments and viscera of the body. However, some body tissues do not have nociceptors. For example, the brain. However, blood vessels within the brain do have nociceptors. There is a variety of different substances released by damaged cells which can stimulate nociceptive fibres. For example, prostaglandins, histamine, ATP, bradykinin, serotonin, and H plus ions. Upon detection of noxious stimuli, the nociceptors generate an action potential at the distal end of the first order neuron. This action potential then travels to the central nervous system. Some nociceptive fibers have specialized receptors in the periphery. Therefore, these fibers will only depolarize upon the presentation of a particular stimulus. For example, there are thermal receptors, such as TRPV1, that is stimulated by heat. This receptor is also stimulated by capsaicin, which is commonly found in chilies, explaining why chilies feel hot. There are also mechanical receptors, which respond to crushing, incisions and breaks in the skin and chemical receptors, which respond to caustic 
or irritating molecules exposed to the skin. The stimulation threshold of all nociceptors can be reduced by local inflammatory factors. This process is called sensitization. Following nociception, oh, and I'll talk a little bit about peripheral pain. Peripheral pain is the sensation of pain that you commonly feel following an injury. It is sharp, well localized, and associated with the signs of inflammation, such as redness, swelling, and loss of function. Following injury, inflammatory mediators are released. This response is aimed at promoting healing and the pain sensation can be modified by anti-inflammatory drugs such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs for short. If the peripheral nociceptors are stimulated for a longer period of time, peripheral sensitization can occur. This is a result of the long-term release of inflammatory mediators and neuropeptides locally, which can increase the excitability of the nociceptors due to changes in the structure of the neuron membranes. The pseudo-unipolar first-order sensory neurons produce these inflammatory mediators such as substance P and CGRP in their cell bodies and they are transported to either end of the neuron both peripherally and centrally causing the sensitization. I will cover this peripheral sensitization in greater depth in a moment. Increased sensitivity to pain can be known as hyperalgesia. Specifically, this is excess pain sensation from a lower intensity noxious stimulus that usually would not cause such pain. Damage to tissues and repeated activation of nociceptors is what causes this peripheral sensitization. Sensitization is a normal process and it's meant to happen. It enables more effective healing and also induces protection of the injury. And it can be divided into two categories. Primary peripheral sensitization occurs at the site of the injury. And then you have secondary peripheral sensitization, which occurs around the site of the injury. Damaged cells release these inflammatory mediators locally. And these inflammatory mediators that I mentioned earlier can further activate silent neurons locally. And these neurons can further act to sensitize nociceptors. So nociceptors are even more sensitive to noxious stimuli. Again, I can give you a list here of the common local inflammatory mediators in the periphery. As you can see on the graph, this brings that activation threshold of the peripheral nociceptors down. This therefore implies that the depolarization will occur more easily with less stimulation required thus causing greater pain sensation. Now this peripheral sensitization happens very quickly. It can be a matter of seconds or minutes for this to occur. Slow peripheral sensitization occurs as a result of the activities of substance P and CGRP. Substance P is produced in the cell body in the dorsal root ganglia of the nociceptive fibers. This production is stimulated by the firing of the nociceptive fiber. This substance P first travels to the periphery and is released. It can have two actions. One action of substance P is to induce mast cell and neutrophil degranulation, resulting in the release of prostaglandins and histamine, which can further induce nociception and sensitization. Furthermore, substance P can directly cause vasodilation, causing the inflammation that you see locally and it further inducing mast cell and other immune cell recruitment to the site of the injury. This causes further local degranulation, resulting in increased prostaglandin and histamine release, causing even further nociception and sensitization of the peripheral nociceptive fiber. As well as substance P, 
CGRP, or calcitonin gene-related peptide, is also produced by the cell body of peripheral nociceptive fibers and also travels to the periphery. In the periphery, it acts as a potent vasodilator. This allows the infiltration of leukocytes and immunoglobulins to the site of the injury. This, as mentioned earlier, leads to further nociception and sensitization of the nociceptive fiber. So, to recap, this video should have enabled you to define pain and different types of pain, define nociception, name key noxious stimuli and other molecules associated with nociception, and understand the peripheral pain sensation and the specific actions of CGRP and substance P. Thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.